You are listening to a free version of Majority Report with Sam Steeter. To support the show and get another 15 minutes of daily program, go to majority.fm, please. The Majority Report with Sam Steeter. It is Thursday. June 10th, 2021. My name is Emma Vigeland, in for Sam Cedar, and this is the five-time award-winning Majority Report. We are broadcasting live steps from the industrially ravaged Gowanus Canal in the heartland of America, downtown Brooklyn, USA. On the program today, friend of the show, Astra Taylor of The Debt Collective, joins us to discuss her book, Remake the World, Essays, Reflections, Rebellions. Meanwhile, say goodbye to the Keystone XL pipeline. After Biden canceled their border crossing permit, the pipeline's corporate backers cried uncle and withdrew from the project. See ya. Biden announces that the U.S. will donate 500 million Pfizer doses to lower income countries, a much larger commitment than previously stated. Thought we were completely removing ourselves from Afghanistan? Psych! The Pentagon is pushing for the ability to continue airstrikes to combat the Taliban by drone or by warplane. The blob seeps into everything. A bombshell ProPublica report which found that Jeff Bezos, Mike Bloomberg, Elon Musk, and the other 25 richest Americans pay a true tax rate of only 3.4%. It's supposed to be 37%. It's getting some attention in Congress and with the Attorney General. Will anything come from it? Don't get your hopes up. Ilhan Omar is being thrown under the bus by her Democratic colleagues once again. Debbie Wasserman Schultz, Brad Sherman, and more are considering condemning Omar for saying the Israel, the U.S. and Israel commit terrorism, just like Hamas, which is accurate. With, with friends like these, who needs enemies? And lastly, prosecutors say that 179 water and land protectors were arrested after a mass act of civil disobedience at the construction of the Line 3 pipeline which threatens water supply in native lands in Minnesota. Activists are calling on Biden to halt the pipeline, which was approved under Donald Trump. All this and more on today's program. Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Sam is out today, if you couldn't tell, but we have got a great show for you. Let's start off with Ilhan Omar, because... This is the kind of story that gets me incredibly enraged. So Ilhan Omar is once again being stabbed in the back by her Democratic colleagues who are caving to Republican framing in a charitable sense. But honestly, I think many of them just believe this. She is receiving death threats, which we'll play one of them for you in a bit. Because of the GOP outrage machine over this just very factual tweet that she sent out. She essentially, in this tweet, says that the United States, Hamas, Israel, Afghanistan, and the Taliban have all committed atrocities and essentially crimes against humanity. This is an accurate statement. There is nothing wrong with what she said there. Um, But of course, she is being uh, just lambasted by the right wing. Everything she does, they're outraged by. I wonder why. They weren't so outraged, though, when this guy said a very similar thing in 2017. Putin's a killer. A lot of killers. We got a lot of killers. Why, you think our country's so innocent? Do you think our country's so innocent? I don't know of any government leaders that are killers in America. Well, take a look at what we've done to. Take a look at what we've done to. Was that not very similar to what she said there? Or was it just the act of saying it about Israel? I, I think that's a lot of what the we're, we're seeing um, from the Democratic Uh, her Democratic colleagues here. But, uh, you know, it's just an indisputable fact. Um, I mean, 
give us just to give you a sense of the vitriol that she faces. She tweeted this out. uh, I think it was last night about just a a clip of a voicemail that she received. Um, We bleeped out the N word, but just so you know, that's what was bleeped out here. That's what was said to her. Take a listen. They destroy cultural heritage. They destroy history. Um, just like Miss Ilhan Omar, because Muslims are terrorists and she is a raghead n- and every anti-American communist piece of shit that works for her. Uh, I hope you fucking get what's coming for you. So. Everybody knows that this is the amount of hatred that she received, probably more than any other member of Congress on a daily basis. And Democrats aid and abet this very bigotry. Democrats like Debbie Wasserman Schultz, who are considering formally sanctioning her, they're showing their true bigotry themselves, honestly, because they are saying to all of us that the victims of U.S. and Israeli violence don't necessarily count in their eyes and they aren't able to be spoken about. That the very mentioning of those acts of the United States killing civilians, droning weddings, killing children, or Israel targeting hospitals, COVID testing centers, schools, religious sites, um, journalists, the, the buildings of journalists and Palestinian journalists themselves, that... That, that that very act of talking about them is so egregious that it needs to be condemned. And why is that, though? Because Muslims are disproportionately the victims of U.S. and Israel Israeli state terror. And in the eyes of right wingers and in the eyes of Democrats like Debbie Wasserman Schultz, the Muslims are the ones that commit the terror, right? Yeah, That's- well, I just want to jump in. When Debbie Wasserman Schultz and... Uh, everybody who signed that letter says that she gives cover to terrorists. They are provoking hate and possibly attempts on Ilhan Omar's life. That's what's happening with that. Because of of course Ilhan Omar isn't um, a terrorist or or giving cover to terrorists. She's contextualizing violence in the context of larger violence. And I'll just let's just make a point on the context of Hamas. I think this isn't a conspiracy theory. Israel helped create Hamas because they wanted a countermeasure to the PLO. This is uh, from uh, Mehdi Hassan in the Intercept a few years back. Listen to former Israeli officials such as Brigadier General Yitzhak Segev, who sa- who was the Israeli military governor in Gaza in the early 1980s. Segev later told a New York Times reporter that he. He had helped finance the Palestinian Islamist movement as a counterweight to the secularists, like I said. Um, the Israeli government gave me a budget, a retired budget, a brigadier general confessed, and the military mo- government gives th- to the mosques. And that's because Hamas and that type of... Um, uh, of opposition is exactly who Israel wants so they can play this game. This is a game that is being played with Ilhan. It's to obscure what Israel's doing and apartheid conditions there and project there. And it's to smear one of the uh, bravest voices that we have in this country. And we cannot let what happened to Jeremy Corbyn, which was a travesty, happen to Ilhan Omar. And I think everyone should have her back today. Well, you're absolutely right. And and I just want to add this too. I'll go even further than her. I mean, Hamas's terrorism in terms of a body count, it's not even proportion it's not even proportionate to what the US and Israel has been able to do. And part of that is because Hamas's rockets or their munitions, they can't target them. They are as Sam has said on this program many times. They are just more explosive fireworks as opposed to the technology that is available to Israel and the United States. Um, And we've purposely targeted civilians. It's been documented. And as does Israel. I mean, and Hamas, it's more just a reaction to subjugation. And of course, there's going to be retaliation that comes out of that. So I will say that the actors that are more powerful that are committing terroristic, violent acts That is even more problematic because of the power dynamics at play there. And as Matt said, making her the boogeyman and and, and wrapping up their attempts to hide Israel's crimes and obscure what's really happening in this apartheid state, they're they're using right-wing bigotry and bigotry towards her from Democrats as a cudgel in order to obscure that exact 
situation. So it's even more disgusting because they know that this is the kind of vitriol that she faces, the kind of hatred that is directed at her on a daily basis. And yet they still cynically use that to achieve their own ends. Um, and yeah. And I just want to say with regards to January 6th, this is this is when we see right wing violence happen. It will be this sort of thing. It will be people like who left the message on Ilhan Omar's uh, message. And uh, I, I'm just I, I, I hope that day is long, long, far off. But I worry that it's going to come because of this sort of thing. Exactly. Yeah. So I hope uh, Democrats are proud of themselves uh, because they, they, they've They've aided and embedded this for since Omar's been in Congress. Nancy Pelosi was uh, instrumental in this in 2018, I believe. Still another formal sanction of her. Let's let's um, oh, you know, it doesn't seem like Pelosi's on board now. But the fact that it ever was a conversation shows at the very least immense cowardice. But mostly it's a lot more insidious than that, I, I believe. Yeah, that's early in the day, too. Yeah, uh, we have to take a quick break. But when we come back, Astra Taylor will be joining us. All right, Brandon, it's your time to shine. Yeah, so we have a new sponsor that I am the the uh, happy guinea pig for. Sam reached out, said, hey, there's a new skincare product that wants to advertise on the show. And Sam was like, I don't do skincare. And I was like, I do. So we are sponsored by Geology today. It is a simple skincare routine formulated for daily use. And as someone who has dealt with acne in the past, I have a particular uh, skincare routine that I use. Um, But I was definitely willing to try this, Geology. And so it's really simple. You go to their website, uh, you get a custom trial, and you fill out this test basically and you tell them about your skin and they send you a custom package of products that, you know, will deal with whatever you're dealing with, um, including sensitive skin, acne, dark circles under your eyes or wrinkles. And, you know, it comes, you know, a week later and you get a 30 day trial, including, uh, you know, the everyday face wash, Vital morning face cream, the repairing night cream. And what I really like is the nourishing eye cream at night. That's a retinol. And for guys that aren't using a retinol, there's never been a better time to start because, you know, it really does make you look like your best self uh, every day. Um, And after that, you get, you can continue with your 90 day trial, subscribe and save and go a la carte. You know, if you don't like the vital morning face cream or you don't like the repairing night cream, cream, you know, you can say, I don't want that and, you know, make it your own. And I've incorporated this into my like dermatologist recommended, uh, face routine, I guess. And it's been really nice, been very seamless. And I've noticed like great results so far. And there's like, you know, tons of people love it. It's been written up in Esquire and men's health and, you know, I thank all of our listeners as we leave this, you know, COVID life wearing masks all the time and we get to be a little social again. You go to see your friends. You want to be looking your best. And, you know, I think, you know, we could all benefit from that. So head over to geology.com and take the free skincare quiz. You can save up to 40% on your 30-day trial and just click the link in the YouTube or the podcast description. That's how they know that our listeners are going to be looking good and glamorous on their website. And you go to geology.com, save 40% off your 30 day trial today. Wow. Wow. Well done, Brendan. Yeah, Billy Mays over here. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh, all right. We have Astra. Should be right with us here. Okay. Joining us now. Okay. I'd like to welcome to the program, or welcome back to the program, Astra Taylor. Uh, Here she is to promote her book, Remake the World, Essays, Reflections, Rebellions. Uh, Thanks so much for joining us today, Astra. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm really honored to talk to you. And I I will show the cover because my sister made it, so it's extra special. (laughs) I love that, and I love the cover. And, you know... Astra's been on the show a bunch of times um, with the debt, the debt collective, and you've really 
been, as you write about in your book, involved in activism and this kind of work for for many years at this point. So there's a lot to glean from from what you write. Um, 